at Smithfield, if he does the sidewalk, there's some patch that has to take place next to the sidewalk in the asphalt anyway, so he'll, he'll be doing asphalt work there again. So Smithfield, we could potentially do that, you know, without him having a lot of transportation costs for his equipment. The other school that had a couple that were noticeable were um, out at South Friendship Hill, the entry drive coming in. See, I'm just concerned that we pay to get it seal coated, and now we're going to have, however much the area is, we're going to have to pay again to get it seal coated whenever it's been repaired. Uh, and just because it came in under budget, I'm sure that that money could be used somewhere else. I'm not sure there are terrible areas that you're going to see you know, yeah. fall apart because there's no base building there now. It's just a problem. Are those the only two schools? I think so. I could go back to the list, but I think those were the two main schools that were in question. I think when we did the walkthrough, mm -hmm. I think those were two of the most uh, concerned. And they're going to have equipment at Smithfield to do the if, curve. And if you do the sidewalk, they're going to, in order to get that to be a nice curve but lined up, we're going to have to cut the pavement right there. We're going to have to you know, patch the pavement right at the curve. Is that in that bid? Would it be possible yeah. to have that um, an estimate for that at Smithfield for Wednesday night you know, to um, fix the potholes by the main drop coming in? Or is that too such a I should try. <laughs> yeah, I think if we're going to do potholes one place, we do them wherever they're needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think we pick and choose. If, if, if we're going to do it, then we, we do it where But you, need, you done. said that that's going to be included in that Smithfield price. That Not the potholes, all, all the patch and the pavement where uh, we're going to put okay. the new sidewalk. Okay. So I'm just saying they're going to be paving, they're going to be bringing asphalt out to that site to do that sidewalk. Yes. So it'll be easy. I think it's where down where the water drains where you come down through pull it in on the left right at the bottom. There's that runoff where all that water comes down. That's where it is. Uh, the, again, just being out there, I think that's the biggest concern of that water line down there on those follows at the bottom. Correct me. Down at the bottom and it's south coming in the entrance when you're making that left. Uh, coming in where the stop signs are, right when you go in, probably the first 20 or 30 feet, I'd say, and it deferred the one out back by the dumpster that uh, probably the garbage truck backs in, tears the dumpster up. I'm not playing now, but takes the dumpster, it's wear and tear. Uh, it's hard because when when we originally did the walkthrough, you know, we were looking at the scope, trying to be budget conscious, and everything looked terrible and these potholes look like nothing but not everything's done and insane, you know, now these potholes are like, oh my gosh, there's no problem. And we can't, we can't patch that, we can't. I wouldn't recommend putting patch on the seal coat. I think it'll just pop right off and you'll be wasting money. I think you need to mill and fill a little bit around it to get it to, to sit here. We did all, we did all this, let's get it done. Those in favor uh, of getting the potholes repaired at the two sites, we a strong vote. If you're in favor of getting them repaired, raise your hand. I have one more question. What if we waited until spring to see if anything deteriorated more? We have all of that done. Well, I think if we wait until spring, we're going to be paying them to get the equipment out there and pay out the transportation. Yeah. 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 But remember, that's it if you do the sidewalk. Right. Well, they're going to have to bring, if, if they're going to do it at South, they're going to have to bring the machine anyway. Mm -hmm. Right, but they'll have the... Do you the figure, Janine, of how much they're talking about? Oh, their mill and fill price, I think, was $1.18 a square foot on their bid. It was a little over a dollar a square foot, but that was, you know, for the whole job. So it's probably going to be twice that. But then again, I mean, they do have a, a significant amount of punch list items that are things they need to correct because they just weren't done well. So they're going to be back out to each one of those sites anyway. Mm. So, you know, it, I think we could really hold them. I mean, all these, park, all these parking lots and everything look nice. We, we might as well do it. Yeah. And those in favor of getting it uh, completed, raise your hand. 
Okay. So if you're going to add that to the agenda on Wednesday, you've got to try to get it on. Yeah, do. You'll make it happen, right? <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, Chief Walecki, security, school safety. Any questions for Chief or Chief? Do you have any updates for the board? Uh, no, not really. I have one question for the board I have to uh, think about uh, student driving permits. Uh, we've lost them up to school. Uh, it stuck up out soon we're going back. Uh, I'm recommending that we waive the uh, fee for the permit. We're going to still require them to file for a permit so we know the cars that are parking on the property, that they you know, have insurance and are registered. Uh, however, we're also encouraging uh, less people to ride buses. Uh, so uh, we were thinking about doing it for the first semester and reevaluating in January, but I think at this late date we just wait the whole year. Um, you know, you're going to lose four or five thousand dollars in fees. You know, the costs are still the same. It's up to you. That's my recommendation. If you believe it. I, I think we had talked about that earlier, Chief, and I think everybody was on board for waiving that for this year. Okay. Well, I, I think you need to uh, put an item on the agenda approving that, so we'll move forward. What do we have to do with the update on the policy? It, it's not on the policy, per se. The policy establishes the permits and the fees. It's, you know, you could waive the fee, I believe. Yeah, you're, you're waiving that. Policy, not rewriting it, but waiting it for a period of time. Yeah. That's what would be on the agenda. And it would only be for this school year 2021. And then next uh, fall would take you know, effect again for collecting the state. Chief, can anybody drive without a driver's license? I mean, it doesn't go seniors, juniors, sophomores. Well, we're going to open the driving to anybody that has a license. Year before it was juniors and seniors only. Um, so we're going to add, since we took that sewage plant out down there, we got about another 40, 50 spaces. So we think we can accommodate the cars, but we're, we're still going to make them apply for a permit. They just don't have to pay for it. But, you know, we want to know what car they're driving, you know, who's driving it, and who's parking it. Uh, so we have control of that lot. You know, the ones that don't get a permit, we're just going to put a ticket on them for that. You know, and, you know, why they don't get a permit, you know, part of the problem is they don't get permits, a lot of them make $2 a day, is their insurance is either not up to date or their registration plates expired that, you know, we don't know about because they don't put stickers on the cars anymore. You know, so, you know, to get the permit, they need a valid driver's license, a valid registration card, and a valid insurance card at the time they apply. Yeah. I was down there two days ago, and there's 165 space in the, in the student parking lot. So last year we averaged about 140 some cars a day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, this. Belgium Financial. Um, I'd just like to update the board to say that we're very busy with preparing files and everything for the audit for the 2019-2020 school year. Very busy with preparing those files. Any questions for Vince? Okay. And the only other thing I have before we have the exact session, I uh, have a note um, for the board to consider the old driver's head car we have, uh, consider either auctioning it off, selling it, advertising it, or maybe trading it in on a van um, that we purchased. So the car doesn't get very much use. Um, and we do have the Ford Focus that was uh, used for 
visits, home visits, utilized, that car does get utilized. But I would say that the uh, old driver's head car, I think it's a Mercury, 2009 Mercury. Um, value, just a quick search on the value of that vehicle. Uh, if you sold it, private party, it's, it's between 4,900 and 6,500. If you trade it in, it's about 3,300 to 4,000 on the trade. So, I'll, everybody, it sounds like you're uh, in favor of trading in on demand. Uh, if, you know, so I'll get the close, we get the close to demand and let them know that we're trading that vehicle in. Okay, there is, a, there is a need for an executive session for personnel and Play. Would that car have any additional value since it has the extra feature that we use for the driver's theory class? No, no. I, don't, I don't believe so, but I can check. Why did you think you could sell it to another school or another? That's why I was thinking, you know, I, I know that some of the Bug Tech CTI still does do driver theory and training. They may be interested in buying it. I, I don't know. You know, so I can check just to see if they would be interested. In, if it's, there's no interest, in we just trade it off. Mr. Big, I have one other item. Yes, sir. Did he, I'm not sure if it caught up with the board or not. A uh, draft of a uh, random drug testing policy. Oh, you know what? I do have that here, Mr. Price. I did forget. Yeah, if you wish, we could add it in the first reading. See what kind of discussion we get over the uh, policy itself. And again, that's a random drug testing policy for employees. Is this for any employees? Um, there are employees that we cannot do. You read the policy and run primarily. We cannot do random drug testing for bargaining unit employees, meaning employees who are represented by a bargaining representative. Basically unit employees. Those have to be separately negotiated under their contract for us. And it does include holders of people we appoint to do extracurricular who are not bargaining unit employees, even though the stipend they are paid is covered by collective bargaining. So it's essentially anybody not already covered by our administrative comp plan, which has that, as well as um, any employees who are not bargaining unit. Some are grandfathered because we already have a contract with them. This policy requires a future contract and a mention of a clause saying that they would be subject to bring the drug test. I have nothing else to say. Is that uh, an item that we wish to add to the agenda for Wednesday night? All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, so we will add that to the agenda for Wednesday's meeting. And uh, the last thing I have simply, I've been keeping an eye on the COVID-19 early warning system. And, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, our county's data was 10.4% positivity with 102.7 incident rate. Then it went down to 2.4 positivity and 17.6. Um, then it climbed slightly to 2.9 with 16.1 incident rate. And the most recent is we're still, you know, on the moderate to low is 3.1 with an incident rate of 18.4. So it's crept up a little over the last couple of weeks. You know, um, I'll get a new set of data Friday for the most recent seven days. And if our data stays um, relatively in, you know, good range, I would say that we, uh, October 5th, we can look at bringing our students back uh, with the exception of those that choose to be re choose to be remote, so we will continue to monitor this. Um, but I would say at this point, 
uh, speaking with my administrative team, and you know what we would like to do if the data stays the way it is, is um, that week five, October fifth, bring everybody back that wants to come back, and in those who want to remain remote, just remain remote, and we would use the green phase of our um, return to school plan. And we would not be bringing students back higher than two days a week. You know, we would simply bring everybody back that chooses to come back. And um, so that's kind of the way things are looking now. So keep your fingers crossed and we're able to get people back and the kids and everybody back in school in, in a couple of weeks. Question, when you say if we would bring everybody back, um, everybody that wants to come back, when you say that people that want to remain remote, would that be remote only through our COLA program, or would there be a separate remote program other than the COLA? We would look at students right now that are remote, they're all remote without or gallon teachers. Those who would choose to stay remote without or gallon teachers could stay remote, and the people in the COLA program could all, would also stay in the COLA program. Okay? Any other questions from the board in regards to uh, our return to school plan and evaluating the, uh, the data? I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my administrative team, the countless hours that they put in, late evenings, uh, weekends, uh, Mr. Hutchinson, Mrs. Bezak, Mr. Pusco, Mr. Bowen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your countless hours of your time, your own time, in making this remote start of the school year successful. Thank you to the teachers as well that have prepared diligently to get um, their classrooms ready to go remote. So thank you everybody. Um, and there is a need for executive session for personnel, um, potential litigation. And I think that's it. Okay, we'll take a five minute recess and we'll start with the exact session. Thank you.